Hey, good morning, everybody. This is the professor with Day Trading for Success. Today, I'll be doing some live trading with the new open strategy that is going to be in the book uh, that the Million Dollar Margin Club is going to be putting out. So we're helping backtest it along with a lot of other traders. I have a group of traders with me today. So this is still beta testing. And yesterday, uh, when I traded, um, I, di I didn't I didn't follow the strategy exactly. I made some I made some money. But it's hard for me to change my stripes because I like to trade a certain way. Uh, it was hard enough just not to reverse um, or go, you know, change the position. So anyway, please read this disclaimer. I am not a licensed financial advisor. This is an entertainment channel. We're going to be showing you testing of strategies, some tips and tricks, and get, you get free custom scripts here and free layouts and all that. We don't sell courses, but I am not licensed, so make sure you read that. So today, guys, uh, we it's been discussed. We are going to trade Nvidia. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we are going to trade Nvidia 500 shares at the open strategy. So this should be pretty interesting. It's a tad scary. Uh, and the whole and I'm going to go over this layout and what the open strategy is. And I'm going to try to do a little better than yesterday and really follow it along um, better than I did. So um, anyway, so what is uh, this open strategy? Basically. What it is is you're waiting for it to break uh, the price action to break the pre-market high or pre-market low. So I've opened up this five-minute chart. <clears throat> you can see I have pre-market high and pre-market low marked. Okay, so I just marked out the last one <clears throat> a few just a couple of minutes ago, and I deleted. I had a bunch of profit lines in the middle uh, in between here and i'll go over profit lines because i wasn't sure where the pre-market was going to end up so i just deleted like three profit lines that were in here or four profit lines but i set up the fibonacci on a five minute five day two different ones there's the five day so it's always left to right uh from the peak to the trough left to right within the five day the longest one you can do and then i did a two day on a five minute again peak to trough it could be it could be trough to peak it's just it's always left to right so those are giving us some profit lines where you would get out of the trade so the basic st strategy works <clears throat> excuse me that you you have to break the pre-market high or the pre-market low in order to get in in this case it looks like it's going to be the pre-market low um, you cannot get in the trade until after that. You cannot trade in between the pre-market high and pre-market low. And once you get in on a short position, you can only go short. You can't retrace it and go long, go short, go long, go short. So why is it designed this way and why can't you do what you want to do? Well, it's a very conservative design strategy to make sure you profit more than you lose. Um, so that's basically it. It's designed to take profit at the profit levels and get out, wait for it to breach the profit level again, <coughs> excuse me, and then get out again, wait for it to breach it again and get out again. If it breaks back down, like say it was going long, if it breaks back down, you, ha you have no trade until it breaks back up. But you can also trade as it breaks back up through a profit line. So say it went up and you got out and then it dipped and then came back, then you get back in like the profit line is sort of your pre-market line as long as you're above it. And then you could write it to the next. The FIB would become a profit line. Get out, wait for any kind of dip action, and then get back in. Now, if it didn't, if you got out and it didn't break it, then you, can't, you shouldn't get in the trade technically until it breaks the next level. Then get in and go to the next level and get out. So you will lose some of the upward movement if, if it's just an upward movement, say. <clears throat> In this case, it looks like it's going to be a downward movement. So um, basically, I did try to you try to do profit lines within the ATR levels that are set here, and I'll go over those in a second. But we're right at the bottom here with the pre-market, so I went below it. It's okay to go below it to mark your profit levels. So um, you just want to have enough profit levels. Now, I definitely set these channels higher, guys, uh, from yesterday because yesterday was just <laughs> the nine cent on market orders uh, and the way that the price was moving. I after I especially rewatched that um, video, it was just redonkulous. Um, so. Uh, I'm going to tweak it the way I would like to trade. You you can set your profit levels anywhere you want, depending. Now, it depends a lot on the action of the stock. Now, this with a, well, let's look at the ATR for a second. So if you go to the day chart down here, <coughs> you find your ATR by looking at the action from the previous um, 
day's candle. And that was not, if you look up here next to right to the right of my picture now, look at that number, but watch when I go back over the candle. That number is $796.77. That's the close of day, the day before on the 24th. So you're now you're going down to your ATR level over here. Look at that number. I go back over the candle. It's $39.92. You divide that $39.92 in two, and you subtract half of it from, from the close uh, of this candle to get the ATR low, and you add half of it to get the ATR high. Remember, red candles close at the bottom. So then you make your your channel or your your uh, range. Now it's not really a range bound strategy. You're not going to have a lot of time because this strategy is only a 15 minute strategy. Now there are up and open strategies that go as far as 10:30. I mean, I'm sorry, it goes as far as an um, an hour and a half, as far as 11 o'clock. East Coast, New York Stock Exchange, East Coast time, so an hour and a half after a market open. This goes only 15 minutes. Um, so we are only going to trade 15 minutes. I'm going to try my darndest to follow the rules. So even though I did money yesterday, I did get chastised a bit for not following um, the rules. So people kind of think I can make money no matter what I trade, and sometimes I feel that way except on losing days. <laughs> so to represent this strategy properly, I really – have to follow it exactly um, so that everybody can follow it e exactly and hopefully pr make profit. Now, with any strategy, there's no guarantees, obviously, guys, so don't, don't misunderstand me. But, you know, they're trying to come, everybody's trying to come up with a way, like with Day Trading Volume 1, you know, that became the bestseller that came out last March. I have a link to it. Um, I mostly trade that strategy because um, – I think it's very, very easy for any trader, professional or beginner, to uh, make a living with that strategy and be conservative if you follow the rules. Um, but following the rules is our problem, isn't it, traders? And you know who I'm talking about, me included. Uh, following the rules is the hardest thing to do. So as they say, even if you lost money, if you follow the rules, you won, right? A lot of writers say that. A lot of YouTubers say that. I don't know who coined it first, but... It's the right thing because the trading plan is the most important thing to have a day trading plan with maximum loss per trade or maximum lo losing trades per day or um, maximum loss for the whole day. And then following those, then applying your strategy and then following those. So your strategy can work, you know, 60, 70, 80, maybe even 90 percent of the time. But there's going to be the other percentages, 10, 20, 30, 40 percent of the time when it doesn't work. And you have to follow your max loss. And then overall, with those percentages, you're going to come out ahead. So I'm repeating uh, probably what most of you already know. So anyway, we're going to be starting to trade with this group I have here in about five minutes. And I will be waiting for it to break the action. Look how it came down pre-market. And, and uh, well, actually, this is where it got marked. So I was going to say, look at how it respected that. <laughs> So that's the nine. That's the nine fifteen mark, right? So you mark the pre market in this strategy between seven thirty and nine thirty. And what happened yesterday, guys, is I didn't have it mismarked. What happened is it's supposed to be marked on the five minute, right? So you're not um, rushing to get into. You have fifteen minutes to finish your setup. Um, uh, but uh, so this is marked on the five minute, and then I extended. Um, I had, had extended the lines just to make sure. So if I take these off, I wanted to make sure that um, all my, my profit lines were within. So now if I take that off, it's way over here. We don't really need it to be like that now. But I did that just to double check I wasn't which lines I should delete. You know, uh, So I pulled it all the way across so I could see where the profit lines were coming in. Um, so this is what it looks like now. Um, yeah, there it is up there. So there's the pre-market high from way back. Here's the pre-market low that was marked a few minutes ago. And like I told you, because I was having time uh, trouble uh, the day before getting all the profit lines marked, waiting for this to happen, and then having to rush and mark, that I just marked all the profit lines around the ATRs, and, and you know a little bit above and a little bit below. And then there was a bunch in here I had to delete once these were set up. And that made it really fast. So I hope you guys are following me. So where do you set up profit lines and why are they there? I didn't really talk about that much. So the profit lines are below the pre-market low and the pre-market high, which now way over here. Sorry, I should have kept those a little longer. 
um, that means as it starts to go, as it breaks it, you're looking for places to take profit. Well, where's profit? Profit's at pivot points. So you will see that I kind of did a mean average around uh, pivot points. You can see here, here. And then I also kept in mind I want my channels to be a certain distance. There wasn't any really good ones closer to the uh, pre-market, which is right at this ATR, but I marked a few. Some of these are stronger, though, as you get down here. So hopefully those will come in handy. And then on the upper ones, there were, uh, I think it's a little further back. Because you can go five days back. So, yeah, there they are. They're there. That's a good one. That's a good one. So this is the... Uh, I don't know where the, the pre-market's like right here somewhere, I think. So that's why you don't see them below. I should have left those a little longer so you could see them. But that's why extending them is a good idea so you can figure out where your profit lines should be. So here's more of them. Are like there's, there's one right there at the uh, – one is marked right at the uh, pre-market here for this morning. So uh, is that this morning or is – oh, no, that's the day before. Okay. So, yeah. And then the fibs are your other profit lines. So the idea is once you break, once the action breaks, oh, so there's more here too, yeah. Once the action breaks the pre-market, which now it is starting to go up, um, that's when you could utilize these profit lines, but not until then. So, so far, they, people have told me there have been a few days where it never broke in our beta testing, and you just they just couldn't take a trade. So that's what happens. So following the, the actual strategy is uh, secondary important to following your day trading plan, but you need to follow the strategy too. So if you didn't take a trade that day, then you didn't take a trade that day, then maybe you, you're done by uh, 945, 950, and then you can jump into maybe the RV strategy. So now knowing your patterns is important. Um, you will see that I have a... Um, let me get this ready. We have about a minute. Uh, I know I'm acting way too relaxed because it's just about to go here. So now this could we don't trade the first minute ever in this strategy, uh, and it could blow right through the levels immediately. So I have to be prepared for that. You know, in min, in in uh, candlestick two. Now this is a one minute chart. And this is a five minute chart. This is my level two. This is my active trader. This is a 15-minute chart, and this is the seller's indicator. I'm sorry, the scalper's indicator, which is free, a free custom script. Um, and these are going to spring up here in a second when volume comes in. So the green line is the buyers, the red line is the seller, the blue line is the volume. And then you can see what the momentum is right here. That's why this is so helpful, this indicator. So you're going to want to get that, and you probably want to want to get the layouts we have. So now I did move the level two up here these the, this time, guys. So uh, and I but I'm on my Think or Swim account, so I'm not sure I want to. I, I really should do this on my Swab uh, and not make this available because Think or Swim everybody's about to be off of. I think in May uh, that everybody has to get out of it. So um, so here's our first uh, our opening candle, and it's going crazy as expected. So I'm going to auto-zoom a second and come back to this. Let's do it from like right there. Okay, we're just a, we were just a little too close. So it's right in the middle. I'm not really uh, jumpy here about trying, because we've got to break either here or here before. We, see what I told you about the action on the scalpers indicator? So, so obviously there are more buyers at this point. Um, so I'm going to be watching this. I'm going to be watching the level two, even though it's a large cap, just in case there's any. Now, you can see the spread's ridiculous here. Um, I'll be watching what the market maker's going to give me, particularly when I come up to the profit line, so I don't get uh, messed up by the spread that I really want this uh, to be where the profit lines are. So I'm going to take note at these prices. That's why they're on the left. So as they come down here, I'm going to take note as to where I, I'll spread it out you know, what I'm looking for so that I can look more on the market maker here or here or even here to see what price. Be careful between the spread on these is murder. Now, everybody's trading 500 shares and everybody's trading market. <clears throat> so the second we technically could start trading if it broke a level, but it hasn't. So this is a, like a hurry up and wait type feeling I'm having right now. Um so I just want to make sure I manage my charts and everything so that when the time comes, I am very prepared to react quickly. 
But uh, yeah, so nothing else is happening here. So again, the platform, one minute, scalpers indicator, level two, active traders where I take my trades. Um, this is a 15 minute. I can watch bigger looking moves, um, which you will not, you'll only see one candle on this. So this is almost not smart. And then I have a five minute here. Uh, which I will, I'll look for multi-candle alignment and then look for the bigger moves here. I mean, this is going to help me see a trending direction just so I don't get confused if, if the one minute goes up and down. I do have a 200, a 100, and a 50 moving average on this as well as the VWAP. What I don't have, I just noticed, is my volume profile. So I will take a second and you guys can see how I do that. Let me just get that set up correctly. So this is the secret, guys. No. I'm going to put the opacity way down to 20. Yeah, I could type it in. I'm just doing this as quick as I can and say, uh, OK, apply. OK, yeah, big mess. Now we've got to get this and make sure this is on the time frame of not one day, but today. And say okay so there's a quick lesson on how to set up your volume volume profile right and here it is and thank goodness it didn't leave price level because that would have been very disturbing but you can see i'm nowhere near now the volume profile is pretty important so since i left that out in our first conversation this is free on thinkorswim this is also free but you have to get the custom script from us so there's a bunch of videos that show how to get the scalpers indicators totally free we don't ask for a mailing list or anything it's just free we don't sell courses. We just hope that you subscribe and give us a thumbs up. We just want your viewership. That's how in the end that we uh, might profit a tiny bit. But mostly it's an educational entertainment channel. Um, and that's what we're really trying to put forward here. So this is the point of control. All right. This hue is the volume profile as a whole. Yeah, where is it? So I made the, uh, did I make it so... Uh, I can't see the volume profile upper and higher level here. Let me, oh, do I have time to do that? Looks like it. I'm going to go in and take a chance here <laughs> that I'm not messing up. Uh, let me go down here and get these arrows set up. So, There we go. Whew, it didn't break it. Okay. I'm sure I would have had some screaming up there. So uh, so here's the here now it looks like it's making its move up. So here's what this is gonna be kind of boring, I guess, until this breaks. Um but it's hitting back off the top of that. That's why it's always good to have the higher value of the volume profile here. And the point of control is where most of the price action is. Now, this is set for intraday as fast as we can get the data in. As you can see here, this is pri the prices that were, you know, price uh, volume here, uh, price action volume. So this just happened where people are buying and selling. So this is very important. There, it's, making, it's definitely making a move up now, not down. As long as it just makes a move, right? We just need to make a move. Yeah, we're only about five minutes into the, we just started the second uh, five minute candle. Hmm. So yeah, I, this is a great layout to get. So I will make it available again on Charles Schwab. I guess they're doing a, a thing over there that if you just say you want it on Thinkorswim, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and make this available today on Thinkorswim too uh, and, the, and the Scalpers Indicator. But um, just just remember that this is just going to be for Thinkorswim. Remember there's an episode just a few episodes back. Can't think of the number of it right now. That uh, See if I can uh, get it over here. Uh, I have six screens around me, so how episode 189 shows you how to import the layouts and how to import the scripts. So don't just assume because they try to lead you astray and Thinkorswim is only going to work for Thinkorswim. The scripts, I think, work on either. Uh, but, but again, watch that video, episode 189. It's like three minutes long. 
and it tells you how to put these scripts in that are free. And there's a whole bunch of scripts on, I think on episode 83, there's like 10 custom scripts that are really handy on different things. Um, now guys, you don't see the custom script with the halt indicator up here because, um, I, uh, uh, I'm, I don't worry about halt on stocks like NVIDIA. <laughs> so, don't, but there is, you will see me sometimes have that on the perfect one minute, as well as the grid. You'll see me do the five minute grid that shows when a five minute candle is going to close. Again, in 15 minutes of trading, which is the rules here, I don't put it on. And why wouldn't I always have it on? Because everything you add slows down your platform. So, remember, I have a video that shows you how to speed up your platform. I, it's like it's a very early on episode in the in the 1 through 10 or 1 through 20. So just look it up, how to speed up your platform or um, your trading or something. There's an episode that shows you how to do that as well as how to set up your charts, how to set up your scanners. There's, there's two or three about setting up different scanners. Uh, the uh, Million Dollar Margin Club, who's spearheading this strategy, is going to have scanner settings. Um, we just have been grabbing stocks, but there's going to be... Um, better stocks to trade and it's based a lot on our i got a lot to i have time here so i'm just gonna <laughs> spew but it, it's a lot on your atr you know because the higher atr the larger the, the swings right and and it's it appears the larger the volatility right because you're you're having to move all that distance on a large atr so your range becomes so wide that um it, you can you can high, make higher profits or you can have bigger losses. So you have to be careful. But if you're calling it right and you follow a, a strategy, which we're going to be doing on this, um, you know, it, now it's a little counterintuitive to be trading such a risky stock because the idea of this open strategy, it's, it's basically the most conservative open strategy there is because most people will say, trading the open is sheer madness because you don't have enough data um, and it's like you're gambling or flipping a coin and there's many people that will argue against that saying that on their one minute or their two minute or their three minute charts they have a certain way they get in and they know when to take their profit and they can and they consistently make profits and make a great living trading the first you know one minute five minute 15 minute half hour hour or hour and a half of the open and there's all these different strategies it's just one of the reasons that that new book's coming out by the million dollar margin club so um yeah i mean i'm not i wasn't even going to talk about the books but you've got the three day trading volumes um that i have linked that you the, there's five books you should get if you're new day trading volume one two and three all bestsellers, really good, talks about patterns, technical analysis, an actual strategy called the RV strategy in day trading volume one, how to trade it, how to, you know, open an account overseas or here, how to short or go long or how to, you know, uh, things you might not think about that seem, you know, confusing or simple, but with more detail, how to, what, how to do the, how that level two works exactly, you know, all these kinds of things, even the time and sales, which I don't have up here, um, so that's a must book. And then um, um, Trading in the Zone, Mark Douglas, um, you know, books volume one through three are going to teach you um, about how to trade and then how to, how to control yourself is Trading in the Zone, along with How to Trade. I mean, it's a great book. I think it is the best selling book if I had to. I mean, I know there's one book out there that's just in a, I don't, I'm not going to say it. Um, but anyway, I think, I think that, uh, Trading the Zone is the best and best-selling book, even though the data might not reflect it if you go look on Amazon. Um, and then another book that's extremely good is uh, Best Loser Wins. So those are the five books that if you're starting, you should start with those five books. Um, and then when the open strategy comes out, if you're at all interested, it's getting closer, guys, so that's a good sign. It's about time, right? <laughs> Jeez. Uh, I've been watching it, so... Um, look so far when I do that, right? Look so far away. But if you just started, yeah, I would get those books. Uh, everybody is, uh, I thought I saw somebody had a trade up there, but I guess not. It was getting me like, everybody's supposed to wait. For it to break this line, it's got to break this line. So that's at 803.29. 
it looks like anyway. Is that where that is? 803.29. So I'll look at it here if it starts to get up there. And that would be a long. We're still a couple bucks away, but the way new vid the video works, you have to get prepared. And then I will look to take profit at 805.16, the first profit level, which is right there, guys. That's where I'll look to take profit. Oh, here we go. Did that get there? Was that? That's it. Wow, I got in late. 803.46. 803.46. Now it's pulling back down. It broke it and then came back. So I have I have a thousand dollar loss per trade, guys. That's what my trade my. Uh, so I'm looking at 805. 805 16 805 16 that's what i'm looking at on the market maker i'm going to take that that was very close uh that was my first trade so you're waiting for it to if it dips back down now the way they say it dips back down you got to wait for the next candle to open and then break the next it did it broke the next level what did i get that at 804 92 so uh it was it, i got a little bit below it did break it so I hope it doesn't just fade right off, but it did break that, and now it's going back down to taking all my profits away. So that's scary. Uh, if that drops all the way below the pre-market, I should be. If it drops below your first initial profit line, you're supposed to get out. So now I'm looking at 807.32. It looks like it's going to continue. 807.32. I'm just going to look at the market maker to try to get my price as quickly as I can. If it gets up there, 807. Uh, 807.32, 807.32, then I would wait for the next candle to see what happens. So this is the open strategy, and so far it's working really well. That's it. What did I get that at? Oh, I, get, I, I, I went to 850 so fast. I didn't get it at that, though. Uh, so now did it drop below that? It did. I, I have to get in that. So And then get out at the FIB. Did it get, did it get up to the FIB? What's 98? That's 808.98. Oh, wow. Okay. Was that, what was that? Did I actually lose there? Oh, the ask threw me off. Jesus. Still having trouble keeping up with this. So I'm looking for it to break that lower level that it want, dropped below. I'm going to get it. It broke, it broke this again. It dropped and broke it. So now I'm, I'm going up. So I could get out at that fib or I could wait for the next. I'm going for the next profit line. We're at the end of our trading here in just 30 seconds, guys. So I'm going to try to ride this up to that other fib. Let's see if I make it uh, or the next profit line. The next profit line. I'm going to take it. It seems to be uh, wavering. So that was it. That was 15 minutes. We have five seconds left. That worked. It worked really well, actually. Um, and why I say it worked better than just holding the position is that I conservatively um, took those trades. So I didn't have any. The first trade, um, it looked like I, 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 I held it too long. I mean, it was right at the verge of going too long, just taking all my money away and then going back in. Um, but I didn't get out and go back in. Instead, I held it because it just hit that for a second. Had it broke that big time, I would have had to sell. I probably would have been negative 100 bucks, and then picked it back up for a longer move and been close to the same, uh, same amount of profit. Uh, but then other than that, there were very minimal uh, red area uh, and a big cushion, and it, it kept me – uh, uh, and you know, it kept me out of losing a lot because right there on the next one, I would have had to get out. And then here, if it started to go up right as it came back down through there, I would have had to get out. Uh, it is still going. It's just a, it just keeps going. So now it's said to only trade. You know, the rules are only trading at 15 minutes, and you can only go long. You can't capture a retracement. That's not the rules. The rules are designed for you to. Keep your money and put your money in a bank. So $2,400 isn't bad for 15 minutes. And really, it was four minutes of trading. <laughs> so um, so that was, uh, that was pretty good. That was pretty exciting. Um, and I believe I followed the strategy exactly. There might have been a little hitch here at the, at the opening. Um, but I'm pretty sure I followed it right on. Of course, there'll be written things about how to do this more than just me. But there'll be a lot. There's a lot of traders already starting to trade this online. So now, if this broke back through here, 
and you were still trading this strategy if it was more than 15 minutes, which is all they've back tested, you could definitely get back in at the pre market. Um, now, another way to look at it is um, there's a lot, there's the escalator strategy, which we teach here, which is it's based on the ATR, though. Like if it breaks through the ATR, bounces back and retraces and then goes up, that's the escalator strategy. You jump on the bounce. And then, of course, the oldest strategies in the books are waiting, you know, marking this level where it turned around, finding a place where it pulled back. And then once it breaks that level, you get back in. That That's, you know, that's a sort of like the child's simple strategy that, that can work. It can work um, to just mark a level and then break when it breaks again. You know, you, I'm sure there's lots of people showing that on, on YouTube. Um, and, you know, for the most part, those levels will work. I'm not really teaching that. I don't know what, what strategy you would call that. The rope dope I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know. It works for people. So don't get mad at me that I said that. If you trade that strategy and you're making tons of money, because it can work where you, you know, mark the first pullback and then tr then trade after it breaks it or, or any pullback for that matter. Because as it goes up, you know, you'll make those those, you know, higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, and then, you know, you wait for it to break where you mark those points. Uh, or if you're going short, you know, um, the other way around. You know, so, but anyway, so yeah, I will make both of these, uh, I will make this layout and this scalping indicator available for you guys. Uh, this is really interesting here. So you now have a bull flag. So it's the pole, there's the flag. And if this turned green right here and broke this fib, this would be just normal scalping, a really good trade to take. So, I mean, it's starting to make a bull flag. I'm saying if it turns around here, um, but look at going down to the pre-market. Hi. So I would call these trades right here. Like if I just wanted to trade, you know, I would call this a trade right here. I would just go in. So I'm going to do that because you already saw that this isn't a trade. Um, this isn't part of the strategy. I'm just taking the trade here. So I'll just take a quick profit there. Oh, see how much that slipped? Is that about where I had it? <laughs> I saw $400 and then it slipped to this. This is the problem with market, right? But then, of course, if you do, you know, buy the bid and sell the ask, you might never get picked up or you get picked up partials. Um, so that's one of the reasons that when we are showing it on the channel, we do it this way. But with a stock like NVIDIA, that might not be the smartest move in the world for us. We want to think that we're smart people. Yeah, I could have held that way longer, but I was feeling guilty that I was trading something that wasn't in the strategy. The strategy had ended. Okay, I can't help it that I like to trade. I can't help it. So, okay, guys, I hope this was helpful. I believe this will keep going. I mean, that is definitely a bull flag. So um, this is a strong move. That, of course, is a reversal all on its own there uh, um, when you look at that uh, inverted hammer. So now you've got inverted hammer with a bull flag, and you've got these support and resistance lines that are helping you move up. If it breaks that fib. Um, I know some of these guys are still trading. They 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 wrote down their um, data for the uh, the open strategy, and now they're just going to keep trading like scalping the way you scalp, and they're listening to me. Look at this come across in the volume profile. This is telling you the point of control is going to pull up, and it's literally going to spring that up, guys. That's what happens when you see price action. This point of control will spring it up like a springing board. So um, we saw it. Here it comes again. So that's a lot of price action that just happened in that level. So watch this pop up, I bet. Now it's going to show, it's going to prove me wrong by not coming up. But though the more that it comes over here, the more it's going to, look at it. That's a lot of people trading right there because they're all seeing the setup here, the second the second candle after the bull flag. I'm really surprised that hasn't popped up already. It's just, that, there it goes. Yeah, there's just so much volume. It take, take, takes a second, but uh, there it went. So that's like, that's going to help it continue to go up right now because a lot of people set their volume profile this way um, and they're literally learning how to do this is important so watch watch my videos guys it shows i mean this is a no-brainer i didn't really uh, open up the scalping indicator that much to show you but i'll go over how this works a little bit so you should get this free script when you look here and you see this it's like a wave you're on a surfboard and you're waiting to catch the wave and you just jump on when the percentage is so high here and then just be ready.
be ready to get off before the ra- wave crashes in the rock. So, so when you're using a scalping indicator, you typically have two to six seconds. That's why you use that. It can be verification if you're holding a move longer, but if you're just trying to capitalize on a quick wave surge from the scalpers indicator, you just want to get out when you see it and don't sit and go like, I wonder if this will go higher. So, Because you can see it turned around. So you got this doji candle. This is a bear doji or an indecisive candle. There's all arguments about what you... I'd read day trading volume two and three, and it really teaches you and the accuracy rating of all these patterns. Um, also, in day trading uh, volume one, it has uh, how to read your volume profile. So you definitely want to um, – you need to do some studying if you're new, but it's really not that hard to – well, i got to be careful. It takes a little while. It can take two to three years to really get in there, and some people struggle longer than that. So, But uh, I, I would say don't give up. Stay in a sim. Keep your share size low. Be careful. Don't bet the house money. Uh, on your edu- but it's okay to spend money on education, you know. Um, I, I know of a couple of courses out there I like. Uh, I'm not going to promote them, but there are a few good ones, and then there's a lot of not good ones. So, But mostly what you get with these courses is just people repeating the same information that they're kind of – either they've, they've learned the exact same thing or they're taking the exact same thing from other people's courses and putting it out there as their own course. Is that – you know – I don't know, you know, who, who's who's entitled to the information because it's kind of like we believe in just general share, like however you can get the info, the least expensive way to you, <laughs> however you can get the info, um, you know, these guys are doing good, yeah, is uh, is is okay with me as far as I'm concerned, just so that you in the end learn. That's we don't charge for anything because we're we're community share. You know, look at this scalper's indicator. So this is what I mean. Like, this is showing the buyers inside your – this is free, guys. You, this is the kind of thing that people would charge you hundreds of dollars for, and I'm just giving it away. It's my own script. So, um, And I'm not touting my own horn by saying I'm just trying to make sure you understand it's not – this isn't stupid. Now, this information here is here. It is here. It's all here. This just makes it easier to read, right? I mean, it's literally just easier to read. So, and some people will say, oh, you're not showing anything different. Well, I can tell you there are thousands now, probably tens of thousands of people that would disagree and tell you this is a game changer. And I'm one of them. Because unless you're really proficient at reading level two, which is better, if you're good at reading level two, that's better than this because this is before the sales of the, of the transactions of the stock. This is after. So like every data on here is after. This is the only one that's before. So if you can zoom in on this and see these shares coming through, remember, multiply these by 100, and you get good at reading this, which I got good at reading this, you know, many, many years ago. And, uh, but on large caps, I find it's uh, almost useless. But, uh, um, but when you get into the – anyway, you, there, this is better than, than this if you're good at it. If you're not good at it, then – this is by far the next best thing. But you're looking at price levels. You're looking at watch some of my other videos. I'm not gonna. I could go in a whole. I'm starting to go in a whole tutor, tutorial because it seems like I barely traded it all yet this morning. So, um, but it's almost time for the RV strategy to start for people. So, um, all right, guys. Well, listen. Thanks for watching. Be careful out there. Stay inquisitive. Stay green. Trade in a sim until you feel really confident. Then go in low share site. All right. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Give a thumbs up.